So in this video, we're going to be showing you guys how to use the Night Operators Fusion, what every single button means, and how you're going to be able to navigate through the menus and mount the arm. So starting with the arm, you're going to receive it in a way where it doesn't look exactly like we have set it up here. The reason for this is because it does require multiple mounting styles depending on whether you're using a head strap or you're using a direct mount-on solution with the side rail here. If you wanted to mount it directly to your helmet and you got our helmet mount with it then you would basically want to set it up exactly like this after figuring out which is the most efficient solution and method of mounting this seemed to be the desired method that everybody liked so it is important to come clear that this mount right here originally it looks the same as basically this right here and the issue and complaint that we get from a lot of customers is that when they try to mount this screw onto the side mount it doesn't fit properly and the reason this happens is because we actually send it out to you guys ready for the J arm rather than this arm. So if you need to mount this arm what you're going to want to do is you want to unscrew the mini hex screw like I said this is the same one as here. You would want to unscrew this hex screw here and then flip it around so that it goes into the other hole. So if I were to use this one as an example you'd basically be taking this hex screw out and then putting it into this hole and turning the whole interface around because there's basically two types of screws and the J arm uses a different screw as the default mount that we have. So yeah, once you got it mounted and all set up, clicking onto the helmet is simple. You simply use this helmet attachment here and you want to go ahead and power the device on. So firstly, P stands for power. And we're going to go ahead and hit the frontmost button, hold it down for a few seconds and then let go. And if you have it all charged up, the night operator screen should come up. Now, whether it starts in thermal or night vision mode completely depends on when it was last turned off. Currently, as you can see, we are in the thermal vision mode. Now, in order to switch between the different color modes, there's gonna be a button up front, as you can see right here. It'll be above the IR light. It's quite a tactile button, so just by pressing, you should hear a distinct click, and it will cycle through the color modes. And so once you cycle through the color modes and find the desired one, there's about eight which you can pick from. We might be adding on more later on. You stick with that and you get to use with it. Now let's say you wanted to go into night vision mode. How do you do that? You would basically press the P button again, but instead of holding it down, you're just going to press it one time. So here we go. We're going to press that frontmost button again, the P button right here. And once you press it, switches to digital night vision mode. So in order to toggle the infrared light on to get the illumination you want in this mode, you want to press the IR button, which is right here. And the reason we coded the IR button to be separate is because some people like to, you know, keep their light discipline. That way they are able to use, as you can see, the little pink purple light there. They're able to choose to turn that on or off at their own discretion if they don't want to spill IR flood all over the place. Also, we do recommend turning that off when you're trying to aim through a weapon optic because it is very difficult to see when you're dealing with IR flood reflecting all over the surface of your optic. So we recommend if you are trying to aim through weapon optic to turn that off and look directly through the red dot and use an external rifle light to illuminate the distance, which you can use anywhere from like pack 15s hollow suns, all that kind of good stuff with the IR spectrum because it picks it up just fine. So if you want to adjust the brightness on the device, it's very simple. You simply press the plus button to toggle the brightness adjustment mode. And when you press minus and plus from there, it'll only adjust the brightnesses levels up or down. Now, once this menu goes away, it sets itself in. And if you wanted to go ahead and then adjust contrast, you activate that by pressing the subtract button and it goes into contrast adjustment mode. And then from here, using that same plus button that you used for brightness earlier, you can adjust the contrast up or down for the device. Next up is dialing in the focus. This is very important. The camera's focus will be varying at different distances. So for example, if we're up close right now, you would have to focus it for a much closer distance as compared to when you're looking further away. That's why we made it accessible for users to just spin the camera up front like this 
so you can adjust it anytime on the go. In terms of the thermal sensor, we were not able to get a focus adjustment dial for this model. So if you want to use it at varying distances, it's basically already set to infinite. And for the infrared light, we do not have a focus beam on it because we found that most people don't really use the infrared light at further distances anyways, and people tend to use external rifle lights. In terms of diopter adjustment, simply by twisting the rear tube over here, you should be able to adjust the focus of the diopter for your own fit. That way you get the right eye focus for the desired needs of your eye. And lastly, this top rail right here is the best mounting option for the head strap setup, but uh, we find ourselves most frequently using the side one. That's why you always see it mounted off on the side like this. And so this is the USB-C charging port right here, as you can see. And when you charge it and the device is on, it should indicate that the battery is basically charging. And when you see that there's no animation on the battery anymore, that means the battery is full. And if you see in the instruction manual in the past or any sort of photo of our device where there is a button here, that was the old model where we initially put the thermal toggle button, but we have since relocated it and mixed it in with the P button as explained earlier. And yeah, if you guys have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us by email at info at nightoperators.com. We're more than happy to help answer questions regarding how to operate the device. Thank you.